Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the GPD Win Max, which is a small laptop computer that's really designed to be a handheld gaming system. You can sort of hold it in two hands and play video games using the built-in controller buttons. But because it has a QWERTY keyboard, because it has one of the more powerful processors of any mini laptop to date, it's something that you really could use as a multi-purpose device for both gaming and productivity. After playing around with it for a couple of days, I think gaming really is its forte because this keyboard has a couple of quirks that would take a while to get used to and the 8 inch screen can be a little bit much to get used to as well. But in this video, uh, rather than really focusing on performance, I just wanted to talk about input methods. So we're going to take a look at the keyboard, the game controller buttons, the touchpad that's above it, and the touchscreen display and sort of talk about some of the ways that you can use them. So uh, for specs and other information, you can go to lilliputing.com. I've got a nice chart there that sort of shows what's in it, but it's an Intel Ice Lake processor, an eight inch 1280 by 800 pixel display. The reason it's not higher resolution is for gaming, uh, you get higher frame rates on lower resolutions and it's still a pretty sharp screen. Um, you do have sort of this built-in touchpad, or like I said, you can reach up and touch the screen. So let's take a look first at the keyboard. So I've opened up a word processor here, and I am going to do a little bit of typing. So I'm making maybe a few more typos than I would on a full-size keyboard. But overall, when entering text, it isn't too difficult to type. Okay, you can see a little red up there. Um, but what I wanted to show you is we've basically got full size or close to full size QWERTY keys. So the QWERTY is laid out pretty much exactly the way that you would expect it to be. Uh, things get a little bit trickier when you want to enter certain punctuation or numbers because, for example, the colon and semicolon are down here next to the space bar instead of being up here. The apostrophe and the quotation marks are also down low. So as I'm typing, if I'm used to using any other keyboard, when it time, comes time to enter punctuation, it takes me a moment to realize they're down here. Now, the more you use this, the more you're going to get used to that. And then you switch back to another keyboard and you forget and you start hitting the wrong thing. So there are certain things you can get used to, but it is just sort of a little bit awkward. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Another interesting thing is that the tab button is here above the Q instead of to the left of the Q. It's also a really tiny tab button. So if you are typing lots of documents where you, you know, might want to tab to the next spot, you have to remember that it's above the Q. And like I said, it's half height. Also half height are these number keys and that can take a little getting used to. In fact, because they sort of share space with the function keys above them, so one and the F1 and F2 and F3, uh, it's kind of hard to pick them out just by feel. So even if you know that they're half height, I think it would be kind of hard to type any numbers without looking up at them. They're also aligned a little bit differently because they don't reach over to the uh, the edge or as far towards the edges you normally would expect. So instead of the one being over here, we've got tab and then that tilde button and then one, two, three, four, five. So for instance, I find that the four is kind of where I would expect a five to be on most keyboards. Uh, also, you can tell that they line up funny here because the four and the F5 are lined up. The one and the F2 are lined up and all the way up to F11, F12 goes over here to 9-0 and then the uh, dash and plus and so on. Uh, it has every key that you would need on a keyboard for the most part, but it might have some of them in weird locations. Also the arrow keys down here, the uh, page up, page down, and the um, uh, up and down arrows are sort of half height. So there are certain things that just sort of make things a little bit more difficult than you might uh, expect. Also the caps lock key is sort of in the same spot here as the A button, uh, I almost wish that there just wasn't a caps lock. I've been told the reason that uh, GPD decided to use little function keys about the number keys here is that uh, it's a Chinese company and a lot of Chinese games do actually make heavy use of the function keys. So they wanted dedicated buttons for those functions instead of having to hit function plus those buttons. But you know, it does just sort of make for a slightly more awkward layout. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell probably in this lighting, but it is a backlit keyboard. And if you go to lilliputing.com, I'll have some pictures showing the keyboard in a more dimly lit environment. Um, the lighting is a little bit uneven. Uh, it's definitely brighter towards the middle than towards the outside. And the decision to go with dark keys with light uh, text is pretty good. And the lights actually shine up through that to make it easier to view in a dark room. But the decision to use blue for the function keys 
uh, under certain sort of angles can make them difficult to see, even in brightly lit rooms, but definitely in dimly lit rooms. Um, the camera that I use to take my dark photos actually does a pretty good job with low light photography, so it doesn't always come through. But for instance, if you don't memorize where uh, which of the function keys are for volume and for brightness and for enabling and disabling the backlight, uh, then it might take a little sort of hunt and peck to find the correct keys, especially in a darker environment where you can't see them properly. So that's uh, that's typing. I write a blog for a living. I run a, a littleputing.com, a tech news blog, and I did actually write a full article on this today. It wasn't super painful. Uh, you can do a little bit, but anything that requires a lot of punctuation and numbers, I think is going to take you a little while to get used to. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this if you're primarily looking for a system for writing, but it is something that you can get some writing done on, or if you wanted to do in-game chats and so forth. Um, as I mentioned, we've got this touchpad up here, and you can see it works pretty much the way you would expect. Uh, I can navigate. I can use two-finger scrolling, and everything works just uh, just the way you would expect it to. There's also a couple of other options for, uh, for navigating. You can reach up and touch the display. I can... Uh, Try to move things around like that. But, you know, it can be a little bit tricky to do certain things in that way. And if you're holding the device in your hands, you can reach over and sort of use the touchpad, but it might be easier to use mouse mode for the game controllers. So what we've got here are uh, two analog sticks, a D-pad, X, Y, A, and B buttons, uh, select, start, and uh, Xbox button, plus left and right shoulder buttons uh, on each side here. And you can use those shoulder buttons for right click and left click. So for instance, say I wanted to open the pictures folder. I can just double click on the left. Say I want to view the properties. I'll right click and whoop, scroll down to properties. So that's just sort of using the built-in uh, controls. You can see it's a little bit sort of slow to move the mouse, but it works. Uh, there's a button on the side or a toggle on the side of the computer that switches between mouse mode and gamepad mode. So in gamepad mode, nothing happens. In mouse mode, I can move things around that way and navigate without having to sort of put this down. So if you're holding it, this works out nicely. Uh, since this is a sort of 1.8 pound machine that has an eight inch display, and you know, like I said, it's not exactly pocket size, it's pretty comfortable to hold in your hands, but I wouldn't necessarily expect it to be something that would be that much easier to take than a two or three pound laptop if you wanted to take a thin and light portable laptop for productivity. So for instance, you know, I've got here the Dell XPS 13, which is a 2.6 pound laptop with a full size 13.4 inch display, a full size keyboard, uh, really probably a much better option if you're just looking for productivity. But if you're looking for something for gaming, you know, this is a little bit lighter, and you do sort of have those built-in controls for gaming. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the um, gamepad controls. That's actually not the game that I meant to launch. So let's go ahead and see if we can stop this. Uh, the only reason I wanted to switch games is because this is one that I've actually played more recently and I know the controls for. I'm not really a heavy gamer, but I did just want to sort of show you that it works reasonably well for those things. When I first took a look at this device, I thought that these buttons and, and sticks seemed a little small, but they're actually really pretty comfortable to hold on to. So that's one game. Let's try a different game. It has maybe a little bit more to do right now. I'll take a closer look at gaming a little bit later, but you'll also notice that I've got Fraps running here so you can see frame rates. And it's doing pretty well using the, uh, the integrated Intel Iris Plus graphics.
So again, you can see frame rates are pretty good. And the controls work pretty much the way you would expect them to. So I can control camera angles, I can move around. I'm not actually sure where I'm going. Oh, here we go. This is actually the first time I've had the computer freeze on me, so <laughs> I guess now's as good a time as any to point out that this is a pre-production prototype that was loaned to me, or sent to me by uh, GPT for testing purposes, and, uh, you know, it's possible that I can be a little bit buggy at times. Anyways, uh, since really what I wanted to do was show uh, input, I think we, uh, we accomplished that. So you can see that you can type on it, but there are certain things that are maybe a little bit tricky, uh, like when it comes to entering numbers and seeing the function keys in the dark. The mouse mode for the game controller works actually pretty nicely. The game control buttons are pretty comfortable and uh, it's kind of fun to play some of these games even though I'm not very good at them. And the touchpad works as well. So um, just enter my pin, which takes a little bit longer than I expect it to because it takes a while to pick out those numbers. But for the most part, um, you know, I think that it's it's a pretty versatile little machine. So it's going up for pre-order starting May 18th through a crowdfunding campaign uh, for $7.79 and up. That's going to be a discounted price. Should start shipping after the campaign ends at the end of June. And uh, the pricing at that point will probably go up a little bit higher. So it's, you know, not an inexpensive device, but it's a pretty versatile device that is a handheld game system, plays complete Windows PC games, and also happens to have a keyboard that's large enough for touch typing, uh, which, as I mentioned, I think is fine for video or for chatting in uh, games or other things like that. And maybe you could use it as a uh, general purpose computer for, uh, for you know, getting other sorts of work done as well, because it is powerful enough to do those things. So you can find more details at Lilliputing.com. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a overview of input methods on the GPD Win Max mini gaming laptop.